Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I set up low temperature charging protection for my lithium iron phosphate batteries with my Batrium BMS and my MPP Solar PCM60X charge controllers. But before we get into that topic, a real quick update on my battery bank. Uh, so this is the first string of lithium iron phosphate batteries. These are EVE 230 amp hours. Uh, they are wired in a 2P16S configuration. Um, and I had installed these some time ago. However, uh, since the last video, I actually removed this entire battery bank because I wanted to put a piece of quarter inch uh, cement board here underneath the shelf. So now I have a quarter inch cement board, half inch plywood, half inch cement board. That way the plywood's providing structural support and then I have a layer of cement board both on the top and the bottom of the plywood. All right, and then since the last video, I finally have the EVE 280 amp hours installed. Um, those are also wired in a 2P16S configuration. Uh, and you can see the new flexible bus bars I purchased and used for this particular build. Um, they worked out very well. Now I did have a number of people ask how I'm attaching the balance leads. As some of you did note, yes it is possible to drill and tap these bus bars. I used the same method I was using for the solid bar, where the actual bus bar is compressed and you can see there I was able to drill and tap an M3 hole. I was able to tighten it down without feeling it pull out or anything from the layers within the bus bar itself. Uh, so that worked out very well for my use case. I think it goes without saying, but obviously I did all of this off the cell and then I put the bus bar on the cell with the balance leads attached. Obviously I did not drill this while it was on the cell. So then we have the series connections here between rows where I could not use a bus bar. And I just used a piece of number two battery cable. This is from Windy Nation. So here's a shot up the center. You can see all the balance leads come down. They're going down to this K9, which is part of the Batrium. And then that K9 simply goes up and connects to the K9 of the first, and then it goes up to the Watchmon core. Additionally, you can see here on the main positive, I have a 110 amp Class T HRC fuse. Um, that fuse block is installed as close to the battery as I could get it. I run up here where I've got some bus bars from Current Connected, uh, and then from there they go into my control panel. Now this setup has been working incredibly well. These batteries are absolutely perfect for my use case. However, one thing I need to get figured out now is the low temperature charge protection. Uh, we're in December now, it's winter here, and it gets fairly cold at night. Now this is an insulated shed, and pretty much every day the inverter is running, which does keep the shed above freezing fairly well. However, there are times when I do shut it off, uh, and I need to be able to rely on the BMS to tell my batteries when to and when not to charge. Now, most battery packs you'll purchase like an SOK or, you know, something from Big Battery or anything like that will come with a standard BMS that has a series of FET transistors. And that BMS will control those FET transistors to turn on and off the charging and discharging, sometimes all at once or sometimes the charging and discharging is controlled separately in a properly designed BMS battery. However, the case with the Batrium and with most high-end BMSs is they do not have a FET board built in with their BMS the BMS is simply a control point. Now I've seen some people comment and complain about that, but in reality, when you have a higher end BMS like that, or a battery pack of very high capacity, high currents, you don't really want a giant pile of FET transistors in my personal opinion. So the way these uh, devices are designed is the BMS is intended to communicate directly with your inverter and your charge controllers. And the BMS will tell those two devices when they can turn on or off. Additionally, when it comes to things like charging, they can actually do limited charging or throttle the amount of charge current. However, the two pieces of equipment I have, which is the Ames 10 kilowatt inverter and the PCM60X charge controller by MPP Solar, do not support this communication. Typically this is done with a single pair of wires that comes off of your BMS and goes to any number of devices and it can control those devices over that single pair of wires. Many higher end inverters and pieces of equipment on the market have CAN support. It includes things like the Victron charge controllers, the Victron inverters, the SMA Sunny Island inverters have it. Uh, I do believe the Soul Arc has it and I think the GrowWatt, some of the GrowWatt products have CAN support as well. However, mine don't and uh, I really wish they did, but I'm not going to go out and purchase new equipment just for that at this point. So the entire purpose of this video is to show you how I rigged up support for charging control of my MPP Solar PCM60X charge controllers from the Batrium BMS. Now the PCM60X does not have any support at all for controlling charging based on temperature. The only support it has is for high temperature if the device overheats, and it also has compensation for temperature. So it does have a remote temperature sensor which you can plug into uh, a port on the lower left of the PCM60X, and that's just a standard temperature sensor. They will go from the charge controller to the battery bank. And the uh, charge controller will make small adjustments, we're talking hundreds of a volt, 
um, depending on the temperature it measures to the voltage it's charging at to compensate for the temperature and the voltage of the battery. And so that's nice in theory, but it's completely useless in my particular situation because I want it to stop charging at zero degrees Celsius. I don't want any compensation. I don't want anything. I just want it to stop charging. That temperature sensor is an optional component and it's, it's not shipped by default. So I went and purchased one and it was about 50 bucks to ship this thing from China. And uh, it's just a standard uh, 10K, 10 kilo ohm. Uh, so the way that works is it's actually a thermistor, I think is how you pronounce it. So the resistance of the temperature sensor changes depending on what the temperature is. So the higher the temperature, the lower the resistance. And the lower the temperature, the higher the resistance. So your charge controller or whatever the piece of equipment is will sense that temperature and can report back the temperature correctly depending on what the resistance it measures is. By default, this functionality is turned off in the PCM60X because it is an optional component. To turn it on, you simply have to set the compensation setting uh, to any number other than zero. When it's at zero, it's turned off. When it's set to 0 0.01, uh, it's turned on. So I went and just set it to 0 0.01 to enable the feature and what I found is that when the temperature sensor is not connected, the charge controller essentially measures infinite resistance, which reports back negative 30 degrees Celsius and shuts down the controller into uh, fault mode. Uh, so what I did was I exploited that functionality and found that if I connect a 15K or 15 kilo ohm resistor across the temperature sensor port, the charge controller will report back approximately 25 degrees Celsius. 25 degrees Celsius is about room temperature and that's where the controller starts to worry about uh, voltage compensation. So by keeping it at 25 degrees Celsius, there is no compensation, even though the function is turned on, no change of voltage or anything like that. Uh, so it's easy at this point. We basically have the off state, you disconnect the sensor, and the on state, you put a resistor. So that's very easy to control with a simple relay. All right, so in this cabinet, I have my Batrium Watchmon Core installed, and I also have their new Expansion 3 uh, control module. Uh, so this is basically an upgraded version of their Expansion 2. We have uh, three mechanical relays, and then we have three solid state relays. And the solid state relays are good for up to 220 volts DC, which is significantly more than what the old relays. I think the relays are rated for like 30 volts or something like that. Down here is where I have my inverter control connected. I have a previous video that shows how I set that up. But basically what I have up here is I used one of the solid state relays and I'm using it to control this board over here containing four mechanical relays. So I have all four pins wired together. That way when this relay engages, it engages all four of these relays at the same time. And that's simply because I have three PCM60X charge controllers. I want them all to be controlled, but I don't want to use up all three relays on this control board. Sure, you could have used up all three relays here if you wanted to, but uh, so the way this is wired is the main positive, which is a 12 volt power supply, comes up to the positive connection of the relay. The second pin of the relay comes out and goes to the positive connections on this relay board. All four of these are wired together. Then I have the negative connection for the 12 volt power supply comes up and goes down to the power supply, and that's this wire right here. So essentially, this relay is simply applying 12 volts to all four of these relays. Then down here, you can see I have three wires coming out. Each one of these wires is two conductors. We have PV1, PV2, and PV3. Each one of these corresponds to a separate PCM60X charge controller, and these are connected to the normally open ports. And I purposely use the normally open ports, that way the Batrium needs to explicitly tell these relays to turn on, to turn on charging. Uh, otherwise, if any fault occurs anywhere along this path, such as the Batrium fails, any one of these relays fail, um, they will hopefully fail in the off state, which will disable the charging. Uh, so here's the wire from PV3 that we looked at on the Batrium comes in and goes to those two connectors right there. You can see the wire on the right has a piece of black heat shrink over it. There's a 15 kilo ohm resistor under there. So once those relays turn on, all it's simply doing is applying that 15 kilo ohm resistor across those two pins. And when the relay turns off, the circuit is open, which triggers the fault mode. So if we take a look at the Batrium software here, we can see I have it configured the low cell Celsius for three degrees. That means once any of the temperature sensors on the battery, reach three degrees Celsius, it will stop charging. All right, so to demonstrate this works, you can see all three charge controllers are charging as indicated by the flashing green light here. I know it's a little difficult to see the displays, but uh, I have a glass of hopefully freezing water with some ice cubes in there. And I just grabbed one of the temperature sensors at random from the Batrium. Now this Batrium is configured with a five uh, 
second delay, so it may take a little bit here for this to work. I'm just going to insert this. So the lowest temperature is currently showing 8 degrees Celsius on the batrium. It's down to 5 degrees Celsius. Negative 2, so it should shut down at any minute here. Negative 6, there it goes. And we see all three charge controllers entered fault state. So you can see here they're all showing fault code 6, and they have the fault code illuminated they've stopped charging. So both the FETs in the charge controller shut off as well as the isolation relays. Uh, so now I'm just going to squeeze this in my hand for a little bit to warm it up. And I do believe it has a 30 second restart delay here. So it's gonna take about a minute to turn back on. So the Batrium is already showing eight degrees Celsius on the coldest sensor. All right, then you heard a relay click and there you can see the fault condition has cleared and all three controllers are starting back up. They've not, oh, there they go. So now the relays on the controllers themselves engaged, the isolation relays closed, and we are now charging again. All right, so there we go. I think that was a somewhat creative way, and it seems to work very well of controlling those charge controllers with the Batrium. And it's very simple. All it's doing is applying a resistor across the temperature sensor port to trick it into going to a fault state. So now there are two things to mention on this. First of all, this does not take the place of proper settings in the charge controller. I still have it configured to uh, proper voltages for lithium iron phosphate batteries. I'm using this uh, method of controlling my chargers simply as a way for temperature protection. The Batrium is not going to shut the controllers off when the batteries reach 100% state of charge, right? Because those voltage parameters programmed in the charge controller will automatically have the controller throttling down the voltage. The second thing to point out is that obviously this is not proper use of the equipment. The equipment is not designed to be controlled in this manner. It's not designed to work in this manner. It does work for me in my particular use case. However, you know, I don't, I don't know that I would suggest other people set it up the same way. While it does work, the equipment is not designed to be used this way. Now there are some ways you could do this differently. You could build a board of FET transistors and use those transistors to turn on and off the PV input to the charge controller. Some people are also using contactors and their Batrium will control contactors to turn those on and off to control either the charging or the PV input of the charge controller. I just like this particular route because it worked well for my use case personally and it didn't involve any other uh, wiring aside from applying a single resistor. Yeah, that's that was basically it. If you found this interesting, please hit that like button down below. As always, questions or comments, you can leave those as well. I always try to read and respond to as many as possible. And this will probably be the last update for a while considering it's winter regarding this particular project. Upcoming videos will include a few questions that were asked and I would like to answer and provide more detail on as well as I have several batteries on the way for review, testing, and the usual teardown. So yeah, that's about it. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.